Your ashes will pay for our fear. No one step back. You will be crushed under the rock of Horus. <laughs> Emperor, my beloved, why the fuck Imperial Fists even exist in such a cancerous form? Yeah, let's just fucking create a legion that wins by sitting in their arses all match. It will be so interesting to play for and against them. I swear to fucking god, every single Imphists fan is either autistic, brain dead, or infuriated mixture of both. Whoa, legion shoot bolters and builds walls. So cool. Look everyone, they made a sequel to watching a painted wall dry. Now with guns. There are two and a half characters in the whole Legion from Horse Heresy series that even have personality. And Pollux only gets it by befriending a lawyer Iron Warrior. Barbarus is the best boy no one cares about cockroaches. Don't believe me? Maybe some of you even offended by my opinion? Fuck you, I ain't gonna care about people who enjoy press a button play green card gameplay. It's harder than that, some of you idiots would cry out, but I can fucking prove you you're wrong, with facts and logic you like so much. We will start with tactics this time. I don't care that legionaries should be strong, they should be not as fucking strong so you can drop two OP legendaries in one turn. Arcamos after Arcamos, for example. Or you can even save your OP cheaper legendary for another turn. I honestly think this is a card that needed a buff before, but maybe giving Bastion 2 on a unit is too much. Infists have a lot of ways to stack Bastion already, no need to overdo it, EG. Bastion 1 would be fine. Or just yeah, remove all Bastion stacks on a target unit, so you kind of sacrifice your defenses for one push, as the idea of a shield charge suggests. On release, terraforming was doing what Imperial Palace used to do. Draw a structure for 2 energy and make it 1 energy cheaper. And you know what Imperial Palace did? 3 energy draw a structure from your deck and make it 2 energy cheaper. Can you imagine how annoying it was to fight Cambodias back then? Cheap ass structures to spam turrets with. It was so annoying. I for some reason remembered Imperial Palace straight up creating copies of structures from your deck and only a therapy session with ancient parent helped me to remember the truth. Oh, let's give a legion that shits out tokens on the board even more ways to shit them out. You know the fucking drill, be rewarded for spamming shit without even thinking about it. Fuck this card. Okay, people, what the actual fuck? This is literally sustained barrage, but worse nowadays. Oh, come on, Ignatus, it's just one damage tick. Yeah, when was the last time you saw him fists 
with a board that doesn't have a bastion? Why buffing it? So Dorn's Reckoning would be more playable? This. This was the best hard removal in this game before they re-released World Eaters. Yay, get rewarded for playing the game again! Spawn some cheap troops to make your removal even cheaper. At least World Eaters gotta spend their Warlords HP on attacking most of the time. Fucking Phalanx. You just look at this card and you feel how much Infist mains need hand-holding. Oh, you're failing playing a game to 8 energy turn? Here, have cards. Kill your Warlord and here's some energy so you can do something with your new cards. Fucking retards. Oh yeah, the card that needed buffs the most. That is irony, Imphis fans. A sarcasm, if you will. Yeah, let's shit out an 11 energy worth of troops. Okay, I can get behind it. But why the fuck it was a good idea to give everything Bastion to you after that? EG, are you fucking insane? What the hell am I supposed to do with 237 troops and 314s? And that's if I am lucky and they don't have any more ways to boost up their Bastion. Just don't play until 10 energy, bro. Yeah, thanks, genius. I really wanted to play same old monkey world leader decks for another hundred times. Didn't you forget to talk about something in your tactics section, Ignatus? No, I didn't forget to talk about stalwart defenders, because I'm unable to talk about this bullshit anymore. I can only scream about it. The most broken epic card in this fucking game. A legendary tier card you can have two in your deck. Who the fuck thought that giving your troops 1 HP every turn was a balanced idea? This card, this fucking card is a personification of everything that is wrong with Imphist in this game. Rewarding brain dead, green card play mentality play styles. Fuck this card and fuck the guy who came up with the idea of this card at HHL. Do you think their troops are any better? Think again. Like they really needed more token spam. With stalwarts, it is 213s with frontline just for one energy. Why? It also makes Infist's hard removal much cheaper. There are so many synergies with this one energy card, it's insane! It's too good! Add an Arcamos to the mix, and you get 234s with frontline and 4-5 for 6 energy. Crazy stuff. Before buffs, it was a really well-balanced card. Either a good cheap flank, or an okay 4 energy frontline with a potential of buffing itself even more. But no, Infist players can't even play this game when they don't have busted troops everywhere, so now it's 3 energy 3-4 frontline that can become even bigger, really cheap! Why? The card was perfectly fine before! Always on curve. If it's not on curve, you saw Stalwart being played on 4 energy and then Kestros was played. What was played on 3 energy turn then? On paper, pretty balanced card. Only 3-5, can attack only once. But then you see that Stalwart is literally built in this asshole! And what's even worse, with the Amberg, on 5 energy, you can get two of those assholes buffing each other's HP like it's their personal pillow fight! Imagine this. You are fighting some sweaty Imphist, he slowly gains board, but all you need is one more turn and you will definitely clean it, even though his turns will deal like 4-6 to six damage to your face. And then BAM! He drops this! and maybe even more towards, and doubles the amount of damage you'll get at a very minimum. And if it survives, it can even deal 3 damage for just one energy. What the hell? This card. This fucking card. This is like stalwart defenders, but as a troop. And will be played a turn after stalwarts. And with Hamburg, again, get your board filled for just 7 energy. 
I hate perimetral defenses. The best frontline six energy in the game. Just for six energy, you'll get two five HP bodies that can protect you from almost anything for a turn. And they aren't even that bad on their own. Two three threes if you want to attack with them for some reason. And if both of them survive, our chamus is there to turn them into a fucking pillar man. So, the second best hard removal in the game. The best six energy frontline in the game. Tons of ways to spam tokens to fill the board. The best buff cards to keep that board alive. Arguably even the best card draw in the game. You know what imp fists really need on top of that? One of the best finishers in this game. Gunfriend. These fat bastards can even clear a board if you're lucky. And you know what? Infists are always fucking lucky. But on top of all that, the most disgusting troop this faction has can't even be a part of your deck when you build it. A fucking sentry turret. I hate it. I hate it so fucking much. Oh, it's random. Yeah, so even Warden still ain't saving me from a constant barrage of pew-pew slowly destroying my board, my face, and my sanity. I bet Imphis fans love those turrets. They just stand there, do nothing but do damage to me without any retaliation. They're structures with guns. Literally a wall with guns. A avatar of Imperial Fist's autism. This, this troop, and every guy that supports it, is what's wrong with this fucking faction. <sighs> anyway, we gotta talk about their warlords, and there's a lot to talk about. So we will start with the boring option. Dorn. Dorn is boring as hell, in lore and in the game. His ability is boring, his playstyle is boring, his reckoning is also boring. Whoa, I'm like really amazed by his ability to transfer lore into gameplay features. I really do. What I don't understand is why so many people ask Mr. Midnight to play him on streams. Come on people, I watch those to entertain myself, not to fall asleep. Next is Pollux, and Pollux is fine. He's balanced well, I'm never angry when I lose to him. One of my favorite type of warlords, 30 HP troop spawner. If you happen to play Pollux, you have my respect. This choice of an Imperial Fist is base. Well, almost base if you use Defender of Terror in your deck. But now it's time for some stories. And we will start with Ran. Oh Ran, they did you dirty, don't they? I know you look like a typical hipster from mid 2010s, yet I'm still sad for you. Now, you're just another useless duelist type of a warlord and can only slightly irritate Angrons on a lucky day. But man, how strong you were in your release event! Look at him. Look how perfect and scary he is! He's literally me! And you know why? I gotta tell you a little secret, dear viewer. I hate card games. I know it's hard to believe in it while you're watching my second mold video about a card game, but it's true. I played Hearthstone for a little, but found the process of building decks, collecting cards and playing it really boring. I was always more of a FPS type of guy. But once my laptop's graphic card broke again back in January of 2020, I found this Warhammer Horus Heresy game and here I am. Damn, almost 4 years of HHL. I'm straight up a veteran of this game. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Where was I? Oh right, Ran. So Ran was my dream warlord. Literally just throw the fuck away your cards and beat the living shit out of your opponent. Just like in real life. He wasn't even that strong in events, but the implications of the constructed were hella interesting. Imagine like getting orders from Terra and like 6 other useless cards and then BAM! 28 damage. It's literally what Sanact does. And funny thing is, with Sanact, EG didn't see any problems despite the fact that before his release to construct it, he was gaining plus 1 attack for 2 psychic energy until the next 
Later, it took a player base to show EG what would be a problem. Someone literally created a deckless an act, just put another world in it and set it to EG. And only after that they changed him to a fanboy magic swordsman we know and love today. What was I again? Oh yeah, Ryan. So yeah, this time EG saw writing on the wall and ruined fan for everyone by reworking Ryan completely into an unplayable pile of garbage. No synergies with Bastion, no niche, nothing far from one of the most interesting Barrel Fist characters in Horus Heresy. Is this his punishment for being a person in a legion of nobodies? Come on, EG. I don't want to sit here for two years to see him being reworked into something playable. Can we have a Ryan rework? Or a buff? Like, give him Battle of Honor to gain Bastion or even just slam some Bastion game his current ability. Anything but this. Sigi, our beloved Emperor's Champion. You know, Imperial Fists on a release were weak, and Sigi was not so different. I mean, he was very different from what we have today, because he was useless. Like, look at this shit. Literally tanked from Legacy Salamanders, but somehow worse. And Death's Champion was almost the same, just gave plus 2 attack and frontline instead of plus 1. Single use only, but you started with it. And for a long time, Sigi was just that, another useless warlord in a born legion. But one day it changed. And to tell you about this change, I gotta tell you about another swordsman. Lucius. Not this one, the old Lucius, the legacy one. You know that he was once a troop? Just a funny thing, this has nothing to do with the subject of this particular story. You know that he once was the only epic warlord that had 30 HP? And you know why it was done? Because he had Battle Honor act again with an ability of a duelist warlock to buff his attack. Very oppressive, but luckily for us, at that time Emperor's children weren't that strong of a legion, but then a series of reworks happened to bring life back into Emperor's children player base, and they were good. So good even 30 HP Lucius was playable. But for EG's plans, he wasn't just playable enough. Another buff to Amp's children drops, and Lucius gets his 35 HP, making him a proper epic warlord again. People were worried, and for a good reason. He was already a good warlord, but with this much HP, he could simply roll early game and then pull a ton of burst damage in a late game. You know what happened just after that patch? They start selling new alt arc Lucius. EG, you greedy chicken bastards. You think I can't see what you do? We all saw what you did. <laughs> what all this bullshit has to do with Sigismund? They did this exact same shit with Siggy too. On the next day after the patch. And the altar wasn't even that good. It was a mid cover of a book about him. That was coming out, I think. Who would buy another Bald Swordsman guy as an alt art? There was nothing new in this art. Damn, the usual Siggy has a better art. But that wasn't the problem. The problem was that Siggy became a 3 attack warlord that had 35 HP and now a strong legion to back him up, as he was smashing early game and had a lethal range on par with Tylus Rubia. And an icing on a shit cake is one damage pings had a long ass animation of a lot of swings just for a ping of damage and they didn't even fix that until Shadow of a Warmaster dropped by the way Altars still have those long ass animations HALF A YEAR OF THIS BULLSHIT I just understood all of this too how did they fix this glaring issue? by selling ANOTHER Altar of Sigi now with the black armor of the Emperor's Champion Still no helmet, cause of course I wanna see another bald head, we don't have enough of them in this game already! Three months later, they finally nerfed Siggy to a state we all know him today. My thoughts at that time were, his early game is a bit weaker, but his lethal range is still the same. But monkey people can't see good or bad, they can only see OP and nerfed. So they dropped playing him almost completely, until September meta report. Numens were OP, some people ran Quarkses and Sandards, but some people looked past top 10 user rate. 
and what they saw was Siggy sitting there with 61% win rate on low Terra and 67% win rate on high Terra, while every other Metahor was playing Flavor of the Months, someone was cooking, and that cooking was hella good. Soon. The ladder was filled with a copy-paste deck of that 67% Siggy, at least a crude copy of that. Another green card go face Warlord for the hardest Legion to play. That was a sarcasm. But of course, the bane of my existence, the primordial evil brick in the wall, the most boring, the most broken, the most brain dead. If you need to combine all that is disgusting about Imphis in one Warlord, you don't need to look any further than Kamba fucking Diaz. This shit talking, behind frontline hiding, turret breeding piece of shit. I hate him. I hate him more than any fucking thing in this game. It's always the same shit. He spawns a turret first turn. Then drops Kester and Ahmed on his second, and then stalwarts into fucking perimetral. I bet they sold their soul to Satan for this amount of flag and top decks, but I know people who play Kamba have no souls to speak of. This brick sucker, alongside with his whole legion, should be deleted from this game and should never be brought back. What is it? Oh. Oh my. They actually did it. They killed Kemba. Finally, I can be free from his turret spawn. Stalwart is more of a buff for other Infist warlords. Defender of Terror hasn't been touched. Just is now a fairish legendary troop. And Fortified Outpost is the final nail in the Kemba's coffin. If you expect an average Kamba player to manage his true placement well, you don't understand HHO player base at all. That's all folks. Siggy and the rest of the Imphis will ruin our fun for a month or two until the next patch, but Kamba is dead and that's a good ending in my book. See you later dear viewers. This shit talking behind frontline. Blades, drink what I bought.